Jujetic Ann Cars here. We're coming back for part two of the palette knife. And we're going to be starting on the face. And this is where we left off. And now we're just going to be filling in the areas around uh, the face and the body. And we're going to be defining a little bit more of the lips and adding a little bit of shadow, just making it pop. So what I've done is I'm adding some crimson here on top of the pink that I had. And usually if you look at your lips, you'll notice one area of your lip is always darker than the other. You have light pockets. Even if you have on lipstick, you know, maybe there'll be a light pocket here, light pocket in the middle. When I'm uh, teaching students to do realism, we learn in detail how to paint the lips using the special different brushes, whether we're going to be using a liner or a rigger to, um, to bring in those details. But for now, we're just using a very small standard palette knife. And we're just adding some shadows and some light pockets on top. And we're blending it with the knife. So we have some contrast here. Okay. And like I said, don't don't feel rushed. You know, when you're doing your my palette knife painting, I usually take time. I tell the students to put on music. You know, put yourself in a place where you're just relaxed. I tell students not every day. You know they they want to paint that's another thing sometimes when you're painting every day is not going to be a perfect painting day so you just have to let it go so i'm putting in this shadow where the lips are divided with the side of the knife and i have to turn the knife to the side and that's where you have a little bit of precision and you're just kind of you know dividing the lips just to make a little shadow in there. Usually when we're painting the lips, I tell students there's no line in between your mouth. You know, there's not a line here. Actually, your lips curve in and then they curve up. So when I'm painting realistically, I teach the students how to blend those shadows and make them part of the natural lip and how to curve the brush. This is the palette knife, so it's done a little bit differently, you can see. We had to put that edge going, a line going across. Um, if you have a very small knife, you can pull those shadows down if you want to. I'm just doing this painting, like I told you, the, mo the most this whole painting is going to take me in this sense, because it's a very fast demo when we started. This may be about not even 15 minutes between both videos, just so you get the idea of it. And then I think in the back round, I couldn't decide if I'm going to have her in a pink shirt, but I think I might do that. And what I've done for my pink is I've combined my flesh color. And this flesh color was white, a little bit of red, and some yellow. So I use my tea white. I use a cad yellow. You can use a Hansi yellow if you wanted it lighter. And um, some red, you know. It all depends on what kind of um, complexion that you wanted to give the person. Um, oops, I made a mistake. I don't think I want to have red. I want to have her in a pink shirt and a lime green background. I think that'll really pop. I couldn't decide if that's what I wanted, but I think that's what I want to do. So I'm just putting it on heavy at this point again. And when I'm doing it, I'm picking up a little bit of my face color at the same time. So I'm blending it directly on the canvas. And I don't care if I go over her hair, you know, because I'm going to drag that brush back down. So don't worry if you cover all of this. And Maybe I'm going to have a light area coming down here. And I can turn my canvas the other way if I want. Don't be afraid to hold your canvas in your hand. Just move it around as you want. 
to give her some thick texture to her sweater. Let's see what happens when I mix the two colors at once. And now and then I can come back and I can give her this dark. If I want to, I can add a little bit of black to my Liz and Crimson. Give her a little collar here to her shirt. It's not necessary. And again, don't, you know, feel free to turn your canvas around. Experiment how you how it feels comfortable to you. I have some students that, you know, they're they are not right-handed, they are left-handed. So they will be turning the canvas obviously the other way. Um, but you have to do what makes you feel comfortable. That's the best thing. And then we're gonna add this green, only because I just wanted to kind of pop here on the camera. And you can play around and use different areas of the color wheel. You could use, you could have it all be all monochromatic. You could have warm against cool. You could add tints, which is adding white to a color. You could just go crazy with your combinations. But again, this is just like a really fast demo. In my classes, I go into more detail. And I can do faces that are very abstract, right? Or very realistic, or in between. I could get my blow dryer out and blow dry this and be a little bit faster, right? And there we go. So I want to show you because this is, and this is just like the step one, okay? Let me show you another canvas I did. So here's a canvas which is very abstract. Do you see all of that texture? Look at the texture in here, which is really great for abstraction. So you could do something that would be abstract if that's your thing, or you could do something that will be kind of like in the middle. You know, this isn't finished yet. Obviously, I would go back in here and I would build this up. Maybe I'd add yellows in here just to brighten this green up and make it even pop more. And I'll go back in here and I'll add more shadows because she needs like a shadow here. A little bit, you know, under her chin here. And some shadows here that are falling. But this is just like for now on camera just to show you how we get started. So maybe I'll see you in one of my classes. If not, have fun painting and let me know what you do. You know, put a link to your video or something down below or tell me better off how you tried it and if it worked for you and what you enjoyed about it. See you next time. Ciao.